ਕਿਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਈ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਫਾਈਨ ਸੇ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਆ ਆ ਬੋਲ ਬੀਸ਼ੂ ਆ ਮੋਸ ਗੁੱਡ ਵੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਗੋਡ ਹਾਂ ਤੋ ਹਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਦੀ ਆ ਪੋ ਬੀਸ਼ੂ ਆ ਕਾਨ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਦ ਕਲਾਸ ਸੋ ਆ ਹੋਪ ਆ ਹੋਪ ਯੂ ਗਾਇਸ ਯੂ ਵਾਚ ਦੀ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਨੀ ਨੀ ਥਰੂ ਦ ਲਿੰਕ ਦਾ ਆਈ ਸੈਂਟ right i hope you watch the video yeah i'm going to continue with what we did last week. i mean last two weeks Okay so last two weeks this is uh, where we got to. right this is where we got to. okay so basically uh what we've learned so far we've learned, uh, we've learned that basically we have uh, two branches of statistics then um they are the discrete statistics and inferential statistics and then we made mention that for discrete statistics we describe the data set and then for inferential statistics we are able to generalize for the whole population that means we are able to draw conclusions based on the little information that we get from the population we are able to generalize and from there we learned what the population is of which we said we said that population is all the entity or persons or individuals under a study that's what we learned that population is all all the individuals under a study and then we made mention that population size we have something we call population size which indicate the number of individuals in the population the number of individuals in the population and then we said that the individuals within the population are referred to as elementary units the individuals within the population are referred to as elementary units and then we said that we always have to get a portion of the population to represent the population because the po- dealing with the population is cumbersome and costly so we will have to take a sample and then we said that a sample is taking part of the population to represent the population we said sample is taking part of the population to represent the population and so we said that we normally represent the sample size with small n which is also referred to as the number of individuals within the sample okay then we also said that your sample should be large enough it should, it should be large enough to represent the whole population that sample should be large enough so that it can represent the whole population okay so basically these are the things that we learned last week i mean last tuesday last time that we met so um today we are going to build on it and then we we share statistical that's kind of friends just like the inferential statistics that's the process of drawing a conclusion based on the sum okay so today we are going to continue and it's likely we will finish early okay so parameter parameter so parameter when you hear parameter 
it means that you've computed a characteristic or any uh, any any stat any characteristic you computed any let's say figure from the population. Once you've computed it from the population, it is referred to as the parameter. Once you are computing it from the population, it is referred to as parameter. On the other hand, if you compute any characteristic from the sum, it is what we refer to as statistic. This is not statistics, this is statistic. Once if you computed it from, from, from the sample, it's referred to as statistic. And this statistic is always an estimate. It's always an estimate of the population parameter. Don't forget that you take the sample, and then based on the sample, we are able to generalize for the population. OK, so whenever we compute something from the sample, it is referred to as statistic. OK? And so when we compute it from the population, this time around, it is referred to as parameter. For example, if I compute the mean, the mean, this time around, I'm computing the mean from the population. For example, I'm doing something, I want to know the ages of, uh, the average age of Garden City University students. So Garden City University students will involve, the population will be all, all Garden City University students. So I go, I take everybody's uh, age and I compute the mean, and I now know the mean of the Garden City University students. So this time around, this mean is referred to as parameter. Parameter, you see that? I've computed it from the population, the whole population. I took it from the whole population. On the other hand, this time around, I'm, I'm also doing the same research. I want to know the average age of Garden City University student. But this time around, you know that we can take sample. So we took a sample, and this sample is the January uh, Codel nursing student. That's what we got. That's the sample that we took. And so we conducted this research on these individuals. And so what we did, we calculated the mean from them. And so don't forget these ones, this is the sample. So we calculate the sample, I mean the mean from this sample. And so we computed the mean also, the mean also. This time around, this mean that we compute is with referred to as statistic. Okay? This is referred to as statistic. It is referred to as statistic. Okay. Now let's move on. Now the next term here is what we call variable. Very, 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 variable, variable, variable. So variables are just a characteristic of phenomena that differs or that varies from one person to the other, changes from one person to the other or from one response to the other response. Okay. So um, if I want to know your age right now, your age, you realize that the age your age, um, let me see the students here. The age of the first person, uh, Abdul Latif, will be different from Abdul Rashid, and Abdul Rashid's own will be different from Abdul Usman, and then Abdul Usman's own will be different from Abdul Bashi, and then Abdul Bashi's own will be different from Abigail. But at the end of the day, what I'm measuring here is the age, is the age. But you see that the age is varying or it differs from one response to the other. So the variable here is age. So I can get other variables from this class, like your marital status, your religion, your boyfriend status, your 
uh, what again? Height, weight, BMI, pulse, uh, pulse rate. Um, what again? Your age, uh, hemoglobin level. So, so I can get a lot of them. Your index number, your phone number. Oh, I can get a lot of these things. Okay, so these are what we refer to as variant. Variant. So it differs. It varies from one person to the other. I hope that's clear. So now the next is what we call quantitative. So for, for this variable, we can group them into two. We can classify the variables into two. We have what we call the quantitative variable and then what we call the qualitative variable. We have quanti, 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 quantitative variable. And then we have what we call the quali qualitative variable. So for the quanti, quanti, for the quanti, for the quantitative variable, Yo, it's, it's, it's a variable that we are able to quantify. Any variable that we are able to quantify, we are able to measure. And these variables are numerical in nature. You always get them in, as numeric. You always get them as numbers. And so any variable that exhibits uh, um, exhibit this character, it is referred to as quantitative variable. Okay, so for quantitative variable, they are numerical in nature. We always get them as numeric, get them as numbers. What we can measure, we can measure, we are able to quantify it. So example of this quantitative variable is your age. You see, when you are measuring your age, you can measure your age. If you are measuring it in years, you always get two years, three years, four years. If you are measuring it in months, you get four months, three months. If you are measuring it in days, you get three days, 22 days, 353 days, whatever. Even if you want to measure it in seconds, you always get one second, two seconds. There's no way you're going to get 2.5 seconds, 3.3 .3 or, or A seconds, B seconds. Okay, you are going to get A seconds. You are going to, you, there's no way you get B seconds. You are, there's no way you're going to get both per seconds. There's no way. You see that whatever you get is going to be a numeric number. So. This is quantitative variable. Another, another variable is your weight. See your weight, you can get it as a numeric now, numeric, numeric, as a number. Your height, you can get it as a number. Hemoglobin level, you can get it as a number. Your uh, what again, your pulse rate as a number. Uh, high the blood pressure, you can get it as a number. Glucose level as a number. So all these things are quantitative variables, okay? Now let's go to what we call the qualitative variable. Qualitative, quali, quali, qualitative variable. Quali, 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 qualitative variable. So before we go to the qualitative variable, um, any data that contains quantitative variable, it's referred to as quantitative data. If you have a data and it contains quantitative variables, refer to it as quantitative data. And others too can refer to it as numerical data. You know, don't forget that I said that the quantitative variables are also referred to as numeric. Um, they're always numeric. So some also refer to as numerical variables. And so if a data contains these quantitative variables, we can also refer to as numerical data. We also refer to as quantitative data. Okay. Um, the qualitative data, qualitative, the qualitative data is variable that we can we can only, I mean, we can only make an observation on it. We can just observe it. They are non-numeric and non-non-numeric. They are non-numeric. Okay, they are non-numeric. You just, you just, you, you can't, you can't quantify it. It's just by observation. An example is your gender. When I ask you your gender, you're not going to tell me thirty-three. You're not going to tell me two. You're not going to tell me four. You're not going to tell me six. You're not going to tell me two point five. Okay, so you see that the gender you can only Get it by observation. And this, what you are going to observe, you are going to observe a category. So most 
most statisticians or uh, others also refer to qualitative variables as categorical variable. It's because you always get them in a category or in a categorical form. You get them in categories. Like gender, you get two categories for it. You get your male and female. Um, like your marital status, you can get three. You can get divorce, uh, attach. It depends on what, how the researcher defines it. So you always get them as categories. Okay, your residence, you can you can get that religion, you can get it in categories. You, you get my point. So they are qualitative variables. Qualitative variables. Okay, and any data that contains qualitative or categorical variables, they are referred to as qualitative data, qualitative data. Please, if you have any question, whilst I teach you, raise up your hand, please. Please, if you have any question, please raise your hand. Otherwise, I'll be moving on. If you have any question, raise up your hand. If it's a question, if it's a contribution, I'll give you time so that you can make your contributions. Okay? Okay, so... Now, let me permit um, this Asana Abdurrahim. Ask your question. Yes, sir. Um, please, um, I wanted to get more verification on the parameter and the statistic. You made mention of the statistic being a single value obtained to describe a summary, let's say, a fashion or a pertinent uh, characteristic about a sample. And it seems that's the same definition you gave for the parameter. I'm a little bit confused. Ah, are you sure I give the same definition? I didn't give the same definition. Can someone help her? Please, can someone help her? About the population and the parameter. No, the statistic and the parameter. Yeah, I mean the statistic and the parameter. I am coming to for please help her. Okay. okay, sir. So you mentioned that with the now you um, know the thing. don't come and say I mentioned now you do. Yes, so you the parameter we compute a character from the whole population. So let's say if I want to calculate a mean from the population using the population size, uh population size, that is the parameter. But with the um statistic, that's when we compute a character from the sample. So that calculation is based on the sample size. So that's the difference. So if you are doing the calculation or computing a character from the population, that is parameter. But if you are doing it from the sample, that is statistic. Thank you. Good, 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 good. Exactly. I think her problem is the, the 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 character that I made mention of the mean, you know, from the population I use mean, and from the sample I use mean, it's the same thing. You know, what Kwame just said, when I compute it from the population, the mean from the population, the mean there is called parameter. And when I compute the same mean, and this time I'm computing it from the sample, it is also referred to as statistic. So it's the same person, but just that if it's coming from the Population parameter is coming from the sample statistic. It's just like your tilapia. All right, tilapia. thank you. Tilapia. Who can bro for us tilapia? How can you cheer? We say Kobe. And okay. tilapia and Kobe near sample. And tilapia near population. So that's how I mean that. I think. I hope it's clear. So yes, thank sir. you, Kwame. Thank you, Kwame. Keep it up. No. Okay. So let's let's continue. If there's no question, let's continue. So for for um, quantitative variable for quantitative for quantitative, please take note of it. Too. This is quantitative for quantitative variable. 
or quantitative variable. We can classify it into two categories. You can classify the quantitative variables into two categories. Johnson, please let me finish with this, then I'll ask you to ask your question. We can classify the quantitative variables into two categories. We have the discrete variables and we have the continuous variable. For quantitative, we can classify it into that's discrete and continuous. And for discrete variables, for discrete variables, they always and always assume countable numbers. You get them as whole numbers, countable numbers. For example, if I ask you the number of children that you have, you get you give me three, four, ten, zero, uh, one. Okay. There's no way you give me 3.5. I child 2.5 children. 2.005 children. Hey, then who is that 0.05? If I ask you your age, if I ask you your age, then I can say that um your age you not give me 23. You not give me 44. I'm sorry, you give me 44, 23, 22, 22.1, so on and so forth. Okay. And so that one, you can move on. And you, if I ask you, there's no way you're going to tell me 33.4, 32.1, 1, you see. And so for discrete variables, they are always numeric in nature. That's always numeric. I mean, I mean, they take countable numbers. Though they are numeric, but this time around, these people take on only the countable numbers. Discrete takes on only the countable numbers. Only the countable numbers. Only the countable numbers. The countable numbers. The countable numbers. The countable numbers. Okay. And so the other one, which is called continuous variable, continuous, continuous, continuous variable. So for the continuous variable, they always fall within a specified in. This mouse, you know, they, because they fall within an, an interval or a specified interval. You are likely always getting them as numbers. So if I ask your height, your weight, your temperature, you see that all these things, I'll get them point something, point something. Is that clear? So all these things, your weight will be point something, 36 point something. Uh, at times you can get 60.0. If you get 60.0, if, if your height, your, um, what again? I think your hemoglobin level to get them as numbers, but this time around you get point something. So that's it. So whenever you have your discrete variable falling within a specified interval, it is referred to as continuous. So let me permit, there was a hand up. There was a hand up. Um, what was the name? What was the name? What was the name? What was the name? Can you check for me? There was a hand up there. Or oh, the person is talking. Okay, don't ask your question. Who oh, can meet you to you meet yourself and ask your question? Uh, hello, sir. Um, I want to know whether the color of people can be classified as a quantitative variable or is that uh, the color? Mm -hmm. Can be classified, can be classified as a quantitative variable or uh, okay, so, qualitative so, so the, variable. So the color, what are the possible outcomes? Okay, the color, it cannot be counted. So I think that uh, we can classify under... Uh, no, 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 no. You, well, the question is, what are the possible outcomes? Normally, it is the possible outcome that will determine if it's quantitative or qualitative. Do you get it? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So for, for the color or the skin complexion, just give me the possible outcomes. 
Oh, okay. okay. Just give me the possible outcome. <clears throat> So, so what, I, what I mean is that uh, let's say that, that or it can be a color or the race of people. Just give me the possible outcomes. That's what I'm asking my brother. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's go. To the, the, uh, okay. The outcome. It, it, you, you cannot give any outcome of it. Oh. If you are recording someone's color, what are what, what are you going to get? It's likely you can get white, black. Um, so so, so. Okay, okay, okay. 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 I, I, I understand. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, I understand. But it's white, black. <laughs> they are not known yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Please. It's quantitative. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. These ones, you can put them in the categories, okay? All right, all right. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so now let's move on to the next. Please, any other question? If not, I'm uh, moving on. Okay, so now let's move on to what we call dependent variable. Dependent, dependent variable. So for dependent variable, dependent, dependent. You know, any research, I don't know if you start your research methods. For any research, for any research, you have your dependent variables and the independent variable. Dependent variable and the independent variable. So the dependent variable are always and always and always what researchers are so much focused on. The reason why we are saying that there's, there's so much focus on this dependent variable is because it is, it is, it is the dependent variable. That's, that's, that that receive or is always affected by the independent variable. Again, it is the dependent variable that is always affected by the independent variable. And so this implies that it is the independent variable that is causing a change in the dependent variable. Okay, so you when we come to the hospital, and then um, we you 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 think that the case is a let's say stroke. The person is likely to get stroke. You guys will ask for some risk factors. The first question that you ask this person is, do you have high blood pressure? Another question that will follow is, is anybody in your family um, having stroke or has someone had stroke before? The next question will be, are you stressed up? Do you have enough rest? You see that all these things that I made mention of, the high blood pressure, family history, the stress level, you think that these three things are going to cause the stroke. Right. And so that implies that these three things that you've made mention of, which you refer to as risk factors, are, are the independent variable. They are the independent variables. And these ones you think that they are having impact on the dependent variable. And this dependent variable for this scenario is the stroke. Okay. It's the stroke. And so you realize that I keep telling my students that the dependent variable is the receiver and the independent variable is the giver. That means that the independent variable is the one causing the impact on the dependent variable. Please take note of these things. These things, we'll be using them along when we start with hypothesis testing. 
And so in your research, this is what you guys do a lot. You have to know your dependent variable and independent variable. And this is what we do in research. You always do ask your dependent variable and independent variable. Okay. And this is what they've been doing to be able to draw conclusion of risk factors of malaria, danger signs of pregnancies, um, uh, danger signs, signs and symptoms. Uh, this is what they do. Okay. Okay, so now let me pause to take the question. Um, Albert Agampi. Wow. Okay, thank you, sir. Listen, uh, with the uh, classification of the qualitative variable, you make mention of the discrete variable and then the continual one. But I have a, an issue with the continual variable which you said with a specific one then you gave an example like the temperature so assuming i'm collecting a data of uh, let's say 10 people then with the data and the temperature are countable we don't have a uh, point something point something there so at that moment will you describe it as a descriptive variable or it will still be a continual variable so if you are give me some value, then give a value. Let, always... let, let's say like the temp the temperature, you are getting uh -huh. uh, 36, 35, 30. Yes. Are you sure you get 36? Yes, temperatures at time when you check, you get 30. You should like, get 36. Without... Can so someone help in that, in that case, it will be 36.0, not exactly. Exactly, it's 36.0, but it's that 0, 0.0 is the same thing as 36. That's why people always write the 36. Okay, let's always talk about the decimal. What I hope you are oh. getting the point. Well, oh. even, even on your your uh your your thermometer, it will give you 36.0. Okay, it's not going to give you 36. Is no, that so okay, okay. What of the what of the HB, sir? The the HB or that one please. HB, give I don't know. This HB is what? Is it hemoglobin level? Yes, please. Uh huh. So that one too. That's that one too is an interval. Uh, okay. If you get eleven, it's eleven point zero. Don't you get eleven point three, eleven point seven? Once you are some. The possible outcomes involve point something. Okay, okay. okay. It, it definitely means that the level that you have is supposed to be point zero. Okay. But keep in mind, is always you can only and only classify it based on the outcome. You see, when the possible outcome, the possible uh, observations that you can make, based okay. on that, I will help you to, I mean, classify it. And then to be frank with you, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember the last time I gave questions to students to classify them as uh, qualitative and quantitative for for you for you people. I don't know. I don't remember the last time I gave that question, but I don't know. Who knows? Now let's move on. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, don't mention. Now the next person, Emanuela Ayamba. No, no, Ayamga. Ibadola, ask your question. Sorry, please. Um, please, can you go please your, your, your volume is very, very low. We can't hear you. Sir, please, can you kindly go over the dependence and independence? Please, I can't hear you. Speak louder. Sir, can you please go over the dependence and independent, independent variables as it being receiver and the... Please, wow. I hear you. Let me type my question. Okay. But I hope other chats will not come and clear it. Okay. Um, Gertrude. Hey, please, she's saying. Oh, get through. You muted yourself. Nana Senya, close the door. She's saying kindly go over the dependence and independence variable. I was about saying the same thing. 
Thank you. Okay. Can someone here help them before I come? Please, if you want to help, raise up your hand then. Can someone help? Um, okay, Ebenezer, you can meet yourself. Sir, so, uh, from my understanding from what you said, it means that uh, the dependent variable changes or is influenced by the line is breaking. Sir, uh -huh. my understanding, it means that the dependent variable changes uh, or is being influenced by some factors. And those factors are the independent variables. Okay, that's good. That's good. Let's another person to come in. Kwame. Kwame. Hey, okay, so, so um, in simple terms, you can say that the dependent variable is the effect, whilst the independent variable is the cause. So let's say if we take okay. smoking, okay. if smoking leads to development of lung cancer. Lung cancer is the effect, so that becomes the dependent variable. And smoking okay. becomes the independent variable because you getting lung cancer depends on smoking. Thank exactly. you. Okay. So that means that if you stop smoking, it's likely that your lung cancer, you're likely to reduce. Okay, that's okay. That's good. That's good. Um, get through, your hand is up again. Okay, since I was confused, I wanted to contribute to know if I'm correct. So in no, this case, no, no. you can say the Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I'm talking. I think um in this case, you can say if the dependence is the problem, we have the independence causing it. If, I don't know, I'm trying to understand in my own way. I think that that's right. Okay. So, so the problem, you identify the problem. And then you, you yourself, you look out for the risk factors or probably the causes. So the causes can be your independent variable. That's that's okay. Bad. Thank you. And most cases, these are the things that we do in research. These are the, so whatever you are doing, they always ask you to identify your dependent variable and independent variable. Okay. Okay, so please um I think we can pause for the contribution and then we move on. Okay, please. If um, Catherine and uh, Ebenezer, if there is a question, you can unmute yourself and talk. But if it's contribution, please lower your hand and let's move on to the next slide. Sir, please, is is my question is concerning the discrete variable and the continuous. Um, I was following you, but my my this. With a continuous variable, a colleague was asking uh, if the temperature is discrete or continuous. And then I heard you said, uh, when we record the temperature of, let's say, 36.0, uh, it means it's continuous because of the decimal points. So that's the clarification I want to get. Like, is it constant that the temperature is a continuous variable? This one is not a matter of me telling that it's constant. You yourself, when you record someone's temperature, are you going to have it being expressed by internet? No, sir. The answer is, are you going to have it in a specified interval? Yes or no? Yes, yes. So if you are having it with a, within a specified interval, then that tells you that it is a continuous variable. Is that not it? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So Thank you it. very much for the clarification. That is the reason why I, mean, I keep telling you, but I, mean, I don't want you to memorize these things. You just have to understand the concept. Just understand the concept. If you understand the concept, that's it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank okay, you. so I think we can move on. Now you can meet yourself again. I'm taking that privilege from you. You can meet yourself again. So, um, Catherine, lower your hand. Uh, Ali, let me continue. Later, you can ask your question. 
Ali Prince, Brube, let me continue later. You can ask your question. Okay. Please, um, I want to clear the screen. Okay. Now, what I have here is just a summary of what we've done so far. Um, we have the variables. Don't forget that your variable are always within a data. The data contains a lot of variables. So if I pick, if I pick your data, I'm going to get more variables. Okay. I can get your age, your marital status, your department, your uh, class score, whatever. So, so this is the data. And based on the data, we can classify it into two. We have quantitative and qualitative. Okay. And for the qualitative, I mean the quantity, the quantitative, for the quantitative, we can also classify them as discrete and continuous. So this is just a summary of what we've done so far. So I expect you to put some examples there. Okay. At your free time, put, put some examples there. Okay. Put some examples there and then you'll be okay. Okay. So let's move on. Let me clear the screen. Now the I've always talk I've already talked about independent variable. I want you to analyze this picture and see if you're okay with it. I want you to analyze the picture. I want you to analyze it. Just analyze it. Just take your time and analyze it. Okay, so now, um, do you have any question with regards to this? Please, do you have any question? I, let me permit you to unmute yourself. I want you to look at this very well. So did we are just we are just fortunate that now they've indicated that um they've indicated that um this is the dependent variable and these are the independent variables. So, uh, uh, so this is just to illustrate the independent and the independent variable for you guys. Okay. Um Ishmael, ask your question. Yes, sir. In the yeah. diagram, we have Ashwa as dependent variable. Mm -hmm. Then we have a uh, height and weight as independent uh, independent variable. I want to know how does weight, uh, height, and weight affect causes Ashwa. Okay, you are you are health professional, so you should know the best. Okay, so it's good that you are asking question, this question. I knew that this question would come. I intentionally played this to there. You know, um, I should have cited this diagram. I should have cited it. So you see that 
this is what someone has done. This is someone's research. And per his research, he found out that height and weight are related to asthma. That means that height is related, height and weight are risk factors to asthma. They have an impact on asthma per his research. So this, these are some of the things that you do in your research. So you can cite, probably this is done by Bufa. You see that oh, Bufa did his research, let's say 2029, and then he found out that height and weight are risk factors, but you are not in support of that. So you tend to check if that. So you do, you do your research and based on your sample to probably do it. And if you found out that the height is not in that, um, in line with that research, in your report, then you, you can see that you did not find height and weight as the independent variable. And this is not in line with the previous work. So that's 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 how you do your things. Okay. I hope I've answered you. Yes, please. Okay. So this is someone's way, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all these things are. The objective of this picture is to indicate that there is an independent variable and dependent variable. So these things are there just to indicate that these things are there. I hope it's okay. Thank you, sir. It's okay. Okay. Now, what next? Any question? Do I have any question? Uh, uh, I think there's no question. Well, we can move on. They will finish it. Oh, okay. So now let me move on to the next slide. Move on to the next slide. Okay, so. So these are also, um, I don't know. Okay, so this, this should be nominal data, not nominal scale. It's nominal data which is measured on a nominal scale. This is a nominal, I should have indicated a nominal data. So when I have a nominal data, it just uh, it's just a subset of um, qualitative data. You know, nominal data is um, um a type of variable or data that has uh, categorical data. For example, when I pick um gender, I can get gender as a category. You no, know, I can get the female, and I get male. And this is what we call the nominal. Okay. You can only, only, only keep note of this. For this, you can only observe, you can only observe one category at a time. Even for twins, even for twins, there's no way you can, can get female, female at the same time. And so they are mutually exclusive. That's what we call mutually exclusive. But you, you can only observe one category as, at the time. Okay, that's it. And then for for um, ordinary data, is there any type of data that we can put it in rank or we can put it in order? Any type of data which we can put it in rank. And so that is why when we come to your or your your facility, your facility. Some of you use color codings. Some of you use color codings to determine how severe a case is. Okay, so that is an ordinary, ordinary, ordinary data. Or some may say ordinary variable, ordinary data. Okay, so whenever you can put that data into rank, rank, whatever you observe, if you are you can put it in For example, your classes, we can have first class, second class, second class, upper, lower, pass. Okay. You can have good, your 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 grading system, you can have good, but, uh, very good, poor. So whenever you can put this thing in ranks, then that is referred to as ordinary, ordinary data. I've already talked about numerical data. And so cross-sectional data, the cross-sectional data is very simple, very, very simple. You do these things at a given, you just do it once. Let me put it that way. You just do it once and then you don't revisit that thing again. You don't revisit that uh, 
research again. You just do this one. You just gather that. You just gather that data once. For example, if I'm doing a research, uh, let's say I want to know the malaria rate in Garden City University, then I, I come, I do it just this this month. I just take it this month. I come and check the rates just this month. And that's all. I do it only once at that point. That's all. I don't go and then do this malaria thing again. Just that's 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 once. That's referred to as cross sectional data. Just do it only once. To move your way. But when it comes to time series, time series data, you do this thing within a specified interval or a specified time, time specified time interval. Um, for example, for the malaria rate that I want to change, I'm going to check the malaria rate. Every month, every month I go, I check the malaria rate. Every month I go and check the malaria rate. Every month I go and check the malaria rate. It's like the census. You see that Ghana here, the census is more or less a time, it's a time series data. We can get, we do it every 10 years, every 10 years. So you see that it has become time bound within time series. That's what we refer to as time series data. If you guys are measuring someone's temperature, you always define the duration which you have to do and check the temperature, right? If you are measuring it, um, hour, uh, hourly, uh, minutes, or, or within a specified interval, or over a period of time, over a period of time, you do it over over a period of time. You define the period that I'm doing this thing within this period of time. I'm doing this from let's say first January to. 30th January. That means that every day you measure. Every day you go and measure. So you, you do these things time bound. When you do it, but the cross section, you just do it once. Okay. Uh, okay. So that is it. Let me see the next slide. Let me see the next slide. If I, I think after this, I don't have much. Okay. So now we move on to this, and this one will not take much of our time. Okay, so I think there was a hand up here. Okay, let me permit you to talk. Agam uh, Abbott. Abbott. Yes. Please, uh, Abbott, that's your question. Please, uh, it's about the nominal data. I saw mm -hmm. you talking of uh, the num number in it, which I don't get it because no, when you look at the nominal data it seems it's also under qualitative variable but you talk of labels uh mm -hmm. color and all those stuff but the number then i don't know why the number appears in the nominal variable or data I don't know if you can go back to that slide. Number. Uh -huh. You are friends with this. Yes, please. Number of symbols. By, by name, by name, number or symbols. So is the number that I I want you to throw like at what what kind of numbers can we use to consider it as a normal data? Hello, are you there? Yes, please. Um, uh, you see that there. But I don't know if you are familiar with the questionnaire. If you are familiar with the questionnaire, you see that when you pick a question. Thank you. 
I just see what you're doing. I said, do, do it like how I was doing for you. Uh, Julie, mute your mic. Julie. Hello? Abed, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. This people, I don't know why the internet have switched to a different network. Okay. So Abed, what I was saying is, if you are familiar with the uh, questionnaire, you realize that um, if they, they ask, let's assume that on the questionnaire, you have a question like, do you use condom? And then probably they will you, they, they give option that you can say yes. They give option where you can say no. And then realize that in front of the um uh you can get um here you can say that two one can put here one. Okay. And so okay. instead of saying the yes or no. You say one and two, but this one doesn't necessarily mean that it is a numerical data. This one here is representing the yes and it's representing the no. I hope that's clear. Yes. Please. On the other hand, instead of the male and female, um, one can instead of writing a uh, female and male, you can just say F. Um, M. Do you get it? Yes, please. Also, in front in front of this F M, M you can put one, two here. And so you see that these ones are just indicating a category, but they are not um, a number or numerical digit. In most cases, we use this one a lot when you are doing your analysis. Because you see that in the analysis, you, you don't need to come and bother yourself and type female, type yes, type. At times, the answer may be so long. You get it. So you will just use number to represent it. And so in your analysis, wherever you see one, you as a researcher, you know that it stands for female or it stands for whatever you assign that is. That too, I mean that too. I hope it's okay. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, don't mention. Um, now, now, now. Albert, please, you can lower your hand and then we move on to the next one. <laughs> oh. 
OK. So we can move on to the next. Uh, to be frank, what we are going to do, the next one, don't bother yourself so much with that one. It, for exam sake, me, I'm not going to permit you. I'm not going to allow you to draw this chart for me. The bar chart, the pie chart, the histogram, those things, you don't do it in, the, in my exam. What I'll do is... Um, if we have enough time, these things, I'll teach you how to use the software to do them. I'm not going to, I mean, ask you to draw these things. So if you think you are going to draw bar chart, pie chart, forget about it. And you are going to get a frequency distribution. No, 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 I'm not going to do those things. But you are going to use what we apply, the inferential statistics. That's what you use in your research. Okay. So now let's move on to representation of data. Now we know what data is. We know how we can classify them. So now let's go and check how to represent them. And please take note of it that we always have to use the right tool for the right purpose, okay? Always use the right tool for the right purpose. So if you look at this one, whenever your data, if your data is, uh, if your data is quantitative, these are the tools that you can use. These are the tools that you can use. The histogram, frequency polygon, guide, line charts, so forth. And then when it is qualitative, you can use your bar, pie chart, maps, and then pictogram. Okay. So I'm just going to take you through this uh, histogram, the bar chart, the pie chart, and then you are good to go. Okay? This one, I need not do well. Um, for, let me clear the screen. Good uh, night, okay? Okay, so now let's move on. So for example, this is an example of frequency distribution table. Frequency distribution table. So frequency distribution table, it gives you, so who can tell me the, who can tell me the variable here? What is the variable? What is the variable? If you look at this distribution table, can someone tell me the variable here? You can meet yourself and talk. You can just meet yourself and talk. What is the variable here? Continuous. Yeah, the variable name is what? Name is what? The height. The, the height. And then the height. time is what? Is it qualitative or quantitative? Yep. It's quantitative. And under the quantitative, is it continuous or discrete? Discrete. Are you sure? Discrete. Continuous. No. Continuous. 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 Yeah. Continuous. Okay, it's linear. Continuous. Continuous. Okay, that was good. Okay, so, and we have the respective frequency. So this is an example of frequency distribution. And I remember you did this in your CTS. This is frequency distribution. And as I said, you are not going to do this thing in the exam. I'm not going to ask you to uh, put your data in a frequency distribution. No, 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 these things. Okay, so this is um this is also an example of histogram. Now, as I said, you can represent your data in a table form or in a diagram or in a graph. So for the quantitative variables, you have histogram. Don't forget the histogram, you always plot it using the dash boundaries and the frequencies. But the only difference between histogram and bar chart, you know, for histogram. You get the bars together. 
always the bars are always together. But for bar charts, you get the bars not together. Okay. So this is an example of the program. And then we have what we call the frequency polygon. So for frequency polygon, the only difference between that one and histogram is you remember that um, SHS for histogram, you could use uh, midpoints, midpoints to draw them. And so when you get your midpoints, this time around, you just join the points. That is what we refer to as frequency polygon, frequency polygon, frequency polygon. And then we have line chart. The line chart is all best. It is best used for time series data. The type of data that we call we record it over a period of time. Time series, time series data over a period of time. And so that is why when you are recording the patient's temperature, you 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 prefer using line chart. Okay, you prefer using line chart. And this is what we call the line graph, line charts. And then you have the cumulative frequency curve where you plot the cumulative frequency on the y-axis and then the, the uh, uh the variable itself on the s just accumulated you just have to accumulate it and that's that's all okay so Let's move on. Let's review the relationship. And we use this scatter diagram when we are dealing with the correlation analysis. When we are dealing with the correlation analysis, we use this thing a lot. So, so it gives you the relation between two variables. And so when you plot and you see where it is increasing, and this is very good when it is pertaining to, let's say, a child. It's, it's very important. It's, it's, it gives you that between these two variables. Keep, keep in mind that I said we use this one a lot when we are dealing with correlation analysis. Okay. And then we have the bar diagram. I mean the bar diagram, that the bar chart. Don't forget, I said that the bar chart is either you have it in the horizontal or vertical. The bars are not together. Keep in mind, for bar chart, the bars are not together. And this is your pie chart. That's what the pie chart you are familiar with. Okay, so that is it for today. I'm ending the class. If there's no question, I'm ending the class. I would like Antoinette. Antoinette, please send me high on WhatsApp so that I can send you the lecture okay sir video for next week's class please i'm pleading with you that if you have if you find time to watch the video for next week's class so next week we are going to deal with the sampling techniques now we know our data how to get our sample to uh, get the data. When we are done with that, we move on to sample.
Please, the class has ended. <laughs> This is the next class <sighs> coming on. We can't tell unless the time reaches. So let's wait for the time. Uh, I think the time is the, the time of 11 15. It's my rather. 9 15. No, no, we have, no, this, we have this. Uh, the, we have next like, this one is it's a free period. It's we have free period from let me think that we have a period. So from from now to let me think it's free period. It's free period. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's free yeah, yeah. period from now to let me think. So from we have another chat from now to let me think. Let me let me come in then. You, uh, the I went to let me just come in. Please, sorry to interrupt. Sorry about that. And please, um, do you have any question? If you don't have any question, please. Um, as I said, I'm leaving. So, Antoinette, please, I've sent you the the lecture note for next week and then the video as well. Yes, sir. Please, I'll send it to the various course uh, page. Okay. Too. okay. And I'll Thank send you it to much. the biostatistic page. Thank you very it. much. So, please do well to find time to watch it. Please, I'm begging. Please do Say, well to you. find time to watch okay, the video. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, so... Bye. If there's no other question, please take care of yourselves and then God be with us. Amen. Love Let's you guys. Amen. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Hey, are you bye. a church elder? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, thank you. It's important. Uh, I have to go to church. It's important. It's important. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm an elder. I'm an elder in the church of Queen. That's okay. Okay, so see you guys next week. Go be there as well. Bye bye. Right. Please, about the next class, you said it's 11 15. 11 15, please. Okay, for the uh, what, what about the third one? The third one, it continues 11 15, then we'll close okay. uh, 1 15. Then 115 will we'll continue. Oh, yeah, yeah, next class. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we will we, we'll end it at four. Today's lecture is ending at four. Okay. Thank you.